After finishing my Disney marathon, I realized, hey, I've never seen anyone review all of the Disney direct-to-VHS DVD sequels in one place before, so out of scholarly duty to my fellow cartoon nerds, or maybe just masochism, I decided to watch every animated Disney sequel that I could find. Just to clarify, I didn't watch any live-action stuff or any of the various TV shows that Disney released based on their movies, mostly because I don't have infinite time on my hands. I also didn't include any of that non-theatrical Winnie the Pooh movie stuff or any of the new Tinker Bell movies, since those are really more of a franchise thing than direct sequels. So here's how this will work. In addition to my usual scale of positive to negative 10 out of 10 ratings, I've also included a little box here that shows how much better or worse a sequel is when compared to its predecessor. Just so you can see the difference without opening up my other video and comparing. Though if you want to watch that one, then you can click the info card right up there or the link in the description. Lastly, I've also added some special superlative awards over here, mostly just so I can make fun of these even more. Uh, so without further ado, here is every Disney sequel review viewed in 10 words or less. Let's give Iago two songs! Laaaaaaah! A film made with only red and blue paint. Just enough budget to animate Tim Curry's lips! Belle uses her magic to cast a sleeping spell. Aw, true love. Wait, doesn't Pocahontas die after this movie? These are by DeviantArt Lion King OCs. This is just the TV show. You didn't even try. This video review brought to you by the X Games! <laughs> Moana, in theaters 2016. Well, something happened, so it's an improvement over the original. Tinkerbell tries to kill a child. Part two. I hope the boy mouse and the girl mouse kiss. The real beauty was on the inside. Get it? Remember the last time Tarzan danced? Reminder, this still sucks! Finally, getting that sick canine crunchies lore! There's a girl this time. David is in this movie, Man Eats Rocks for an Hour. Meerkat Science Theater 3000. Ancestors, please help me to learn all about the Naga me. Mrs. Potato Head goes bananas. Hello, yes, it is me, regular Lilo voice. Hey, 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 I'm milking that first movie. Hey guys, do you think Bambi dies in this mid call? Man loses the love of his life to a bear. I wish I was as cool as those yodeling dogs. <laughs> Can you do a Footloose homage without having feet? And that's all of them, at least until Frozen 2 comes out. So, uh, I'm doing something a little different this time. Instead of having a top and bottom five, because there aren't that many of these movies, I'm only doing top and bottom three, and instead of doing them separately, I'm going to just alternate back and forth between the lists. So, third best, third worst, second best, second worst, you get the idea. Here we go! Third best, Cinderella 3, A Twist in Time. The best thing about doing marathons like this is finding those hidden gem movies that you get to tell people are actually really good, like this one. Now, any movie with a title like Cinderella 3, A Twist in Time obviously has no right to exist, but I'm very glad that this one does. It's actually pretty well animated and kind of hilarious. So the wicked stepmother steals fairy godmother's wand and reverses time so she can mess with Cinderella's bid to marry the prince, who, as it turns out, is actually goofy and fantastic and maybe a little crazy. I, I, I forbid you to take another step down these stairs! Okay. Uh, that's sort of the general tone of the movie, and if that's not enough to make you kind of interested in watching it, then you won't like it. Third worst, The Hunchback of Notre Dame 2. Of all the films on the list, this one has the least understanding about what made the original any good. Like, obviously they couldn't have Frollo in it, but they also basically cut out Esmeralda, the soundtrack is awful, Quasimodo gets a love interest so he can have a happy ending too, the George Costanza gargoyle makes out with a goat, you know, the usual sequel stuff. Not to mention, the MacGuffin is a bell with a bunch of gems adorning the inside of it. Do you guys not know how bells work? Ding. Shatter. Second best, Aladdin and the King of Thieves. The best of the Disney Renaissance sequels by far. Good songs, genuinely interesting story and characters, excellent additions to the first movie setting, like the giant turtle palace and the Hand of Midas, which is a really cool treasure. Robin Williams comes back to voice Genie again, and there's two villain songs! The movie's biggest problem, really, is its lack of budget and ugly color scheme. I'm not sure who thought that using all the oversaturated blue and blood-red 
paint that was left over from the first movie was a good idea. Second worst. So oftentimes after a successful movie comes out, Disney tries to release a television series to capitalize on all that money, and sometimes this works, like with The Little Mermaid, The Timon and Pumbaa Show, Emperor's New School, or Hercules the Animated Series. Other times they will commission a show, look at it, and go, hmm, Nope, this is just too terrible to put on television. But instead of scrapping all that soft work, they decide to take the three episodes they have of that canceled show, glue them together with a hackneyed overarching narrative, and package that as a movie. This is the case with Tarzan and Jane, Atlantis Milo Returns, and Belle's Magical World, which is the first and the worst of this type of film. It features classic stories such as, That feather duster that makes out with Lumiere gets jealous of Belle and tries to kill her. And and does you know that the beast hates birds for some reason? Just ignore that part of the first movie. That's a, he, he's always hated birds. And the best Disney sequel is an extremely goofy movie. So I, I think I'll get some pushback for saying this, but personally, I like this movie more than the first goofy movie. Um, I think the first film is more moving and has a better lesson, but this movie's just more fun. Like, I just like seeing Goofy dance disco to pick up a cute disco librarian girl. I like seeing Goof Troop X games. Like, it's not gonna win any Pulitzers, but it, it's just a good time. And it also has the distinction of being the only movie on the list whose original movie was good and the sequel was just as good, if not better. So you are my favorite Disney sequel even though you technically don't count. And on the other end, my number one least favorite direct-to-DVD Disney sequel is The Little Mermaid Ariel's Beginning. So, in a lot of ways, this movie doesn't seem all that bad. It doesn't have the worst songs, it's got good voice acting, the animation's okay. In fact, it's one of the better looking films on the list. It, it, it's footloose. It's footloose with singing instead of dancing, and no feet, I guess. But why is this movie the worst on the list? Why is it here? Well, simply because it is the least necessary film. It's the most boring. There's just nothing to be gained from watching this movie. It's not funny, it's not interesting, there's just nothing to talk about. It's a prequel about Ariel overturning King Triton's order to ban music from his kingdom because something something wham 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 my wife died footloose footloose but but there's no stakes like the villain doesn't care what's going on she just wants to keep her job we know music returns to the kingdom because the original film opens with Ariel ditching her own concert so we know she doesn't care about this that much oh and uh, here's a hot tip if you're a writer you can't pretend you're going to kill off your main character because we know she's not going to die because she can't die because this is a prequel to a famous Disney Renaissance film! And yeah, sure, you could put this film in front of a small child and they would be content with it, but they would also be content with something good. So there. Thanks for watching. If you want to see any other marathon reviews from me, like for Pixar or Ghibli or the Tom and Jerry movies or something, then leave a comment below. If you like these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It's like a digital tip jar for your favorite content creators. Patrons get to see extras and outtakes that don't make it to the final cut of these videos and vote on what videos we make next. Thanks.